Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today it's time for my client Nick's vlogs. And it seems like no matter what I do with this software, it never puts it in water from his files. It's it's uh, kind of bizarre, kind of bizarre. But what do you do? All right. So uh, for those of you who followed the backstory, you know that Nick uh, has lost like 150 pounds. Okay. He's obviously still overweight. He's still working on it. Uh, he's in his 40s. He also runs marathons. And again, this is someone who made a uh, major transformation, right? He made a major life transformation and life choice when he realized that what he was doing was going to end him prematurely. And he went all in. You know, and I think some people, you know, will see this. And it's important to understand where people have come in their journey. You know, because a lot of people are going to see Nick and say, well, this, this guy isn't super fit yet. What's going on? But this is a guy who's run multiple marathons, lost 150 pounds in his strength training now. Okay. And he's doing pretty decent. You know, we're doing sets of 10 with 125 on the bench here. Uh, 175 for sets of 10 on the squat. Now, I would like to see him pause more on the bench. Something I'll, I'll chat with him about. I'd like to see the benching paused. Uh, instead of touch and go, you get better results from it. But what we are doing is building up his strength base. I had to look, teach him basic form. We're building up a strength base. Um, as he continues to do marathons, he continues to follow his, his weight loss journey. And again, he's a very tall guy, as most people can tell. Tall guy with a big frame. And so, you know, some of this will look like, man, how are you doing a linear progression with him? He's already doing sets of 10 with almost a plate per side on the bench as a novice like yeah but he's a, he's a bigger guy and you know normally a lot of lifters especially running tens and stuff at this point they would be stalling out and that's you know that's the other thing that comes up people will say hey what's up with with tens why you have this guy doing tens aren't novice programs fives well usually the free ones but that's because you're trying to build strength quickly i'm not as worried about maximizing uh, neuromuscular efficiency and neural drive I just want to get muscle on him right I want to get muscle on him because putting muscle on is what will continue to bring his metabolic rate up it will get him stronger in the long term and we will go a little more strength oriented as we continue to get a base but right now if we really think about it his overall goals should be body composition right we need to maximize muscle mass as he continues his weight loss journey it will keep him healthier it'll keep his uh, metabolism higher keep his energy turnover higher and so accordingly uh, you know that's what we do and his programming is very basic and i know some people might get bored with this but you know what if you're in his position especially if some of you 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 know older guys starting out your workouts are going to be very boring they're going to be very boring we do four exercises a day and we do the same four exercises. I added stuff early on and rotated it around, but I've got him at a point where we're comfortable with the movements we're doing. So, you know, what's he do? Upper body days, we do bench pressing, overhead press, dumbbell rows, uh, tricep extensions. Lower body days, what does he do? Squat, deadlift, goblet squat, reverse hypers. All right? And it's, and it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, it ends up giving us three sets of bench, three sets of overhead press twice a week, you know, so we end up with like six total sets of bench, six total sets of overhead press. Yes, this is more than enough to make gains. We have plenty of studies showing that novice lifters will gain muscle on three set, three quality sets a week. Now I have them doing a lot more rows, you'll notice 10 sets of rows, why? Well, because we have a lot of pressing from two different angles. Uh, we want to balance everything out, want to keep his upper back strong, rear delt strong. So, you know, that's what we do. Working those areas. Uh, you know, again, as far as, again, the lower body then goes, six sets of squats every week, two sets of deadlifts. But then we do all the goblet squats and reverse hypers, and that starts taking the volume way up. And the main thing you guys will notice is that we keep everything a little more posterior dominant. All right? His rowing is at a higher total volume. Okay, rowing's at a higher total volume. Uh, I'm keeping the squatting and the hip hinging at, at similar volumes, but, you know, keeping in mind there's a big deadlift in there. 
And really there's going to be a lot of glute work because all the squatting works glutes, the deadlifts, and the reverse hypers. So all of our lower body movements do work the glutes uh, and the low back and stuff to some extent. And then notice that his upper body days we focus more on triceps. But there is definitely a bias towards the back half of the body. Why? Because he wants to get stronger. He is technically an athlete, is a marathon runner. And again, being anterior dominant with a weak posterior side is, is, is again, the stuff that guys who chase a look do, and it ends up putting them at higher risk of injuries. And I'm not saying you can't build those muscles, because we do. We do work his pecs, his, his quads, his, his delts, all that stuff. It's all being worked. We just have a bias towards the posterior side. Because the show muscles versus the go muscles. So in his case, you know, back, triceps, glutes, hamstrings, all that stuff gets a high priority. And, you know, with a slight bias towards legs as well. Notice his total lower body volume is slightly higher than his upper body volume. Again, comes down to what do we need to keep energy turnover higher? What do we need to keep him fitter as a marathon runner? What do we need to put the muscle on him in the places that's going to keep his metabolism highest? Now, I'm not happy about that arm bend I'm seeing in this one. It's something I'll chat with him about. Uh, I'm not like seeing that arm bend on those reps. You know, the first two reps he did that on the deadlift. But again, that needs to be fixed. We did spend some time working on his deadlift. His deadlift is quite good other, other than that little bit of arm bend or jerking at the start instead of getting tight. But, you know, lower body days, we do squats, we do deadlifts, we do goblet squats. Again, for a lot of people learning to squat, goblet squats are phenomenal. Taller guys, goblet squats are phenomenal. They make sure that we're developing, uh, you know, the quads, adductors, and hips and everything in a way that will transfer to our squat that's easy to recover from. So note here that, you know, we, we limit the volume on squatting and deadlifting. It's kept at a reasonable level. And then we do a lot more volume on these easier to recover from exercises uh, like goblet squats, reverse hypers. And, you know, the reverse hyper is restorative. And keeping in mind with him being over 40, I think he should have a reverse hyper. This is something I, I tell all my clients, something I tell all you guys out there. If you're over 40, you need a reverse hyper. You need to have one. And, you know, realistically, if you don't have space or money for a reverse hyper at age over 40, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but again, it will give you a lot more longevity in the game. It's a, such a valuable tool. And it's one of the reasons I, I convinced him to buy one early on. Yeah. Right? Because he was using one at the gym he was training at. Then he built his home gym and, and uh, you know, he just went ahead and got one. Because I got him to understand the importance of it, and he understands the importance of it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.